Hi and welcome, I'm Nadine Piet from Healthy You, Healthy Love and I'm a coach for smart, savvy women looking for romantic, sexy, yummy love. And in today's modern world of dating, it has never been harder and never been so easy to find love. So you are in the right place if you are looking for love. And today's topic is kind of on the path of finding love specifically because there are two very important rules that will allow you to attract the love of your life. And if you're currently in a relationship, it doesn't matter. These two two rules will still apply because you've probably overlooked them and can be the reason why you're in turmoil in a relationship or you're feeling uncertainty. And if you're single, you're in the right place because this video will allow you to date in a way that sees you incredibly empowered and making the most amazing decisions for your love life so that you actually end up in the kind of relationship you want. Plenty of women date men and do not end up in the relationship they want. The world is full of divorcees, There's, the world is full of single people and people in relationships also don't follow these two rules and that's why a lot of people are unhappy. So please stay with me because I'm going to reveal it all in a moment. Now before we deep dive into this hot topic, I would love for you to subscribe to this channel and click that bell button to get notified of my next video. Please give this video the thumbs up, share it with a friend who's in need of some support when it comes to attracting real love. And also please comment below, I wanna hear from you, I wanna know about you so that I can support you in the best way possible on your path to big sexy love. So let's get into the topic. What are these two rules? Well, to be honest, they're not that sexy. And the reason why they're not that sexy is because they were inspired by employing people, by HR, by someone who I was talking to who's a good friend of mine and we're having a laugh one day and also a deep conversation about dating and relationships as well, mind you. And she said this thing and it stuck with me. And she said, rule number one with hiring people, staff and really good employees, never hire in haste and rule number two is remember rule number one. Why is this so important for your love life? People who are needy for love, desperate for love, hire in haste. They choose men or choose a relationship because they're so desperate for love, so desperate for connection that they actually don't stay out in the playing field, in the dating field, to actually meet someone that they would be more compatible with. And this is what happens in the workforce. I employ people. I have lots of different freelancers that work with me. And whenever I've been desperate at times and I've just tried to find someone urgently and I haven't really looked at all of the candidates, but I'm in a rush, I'm going overseas and I need someone to start or um, I don't have a lot of time. And so therefore I just sort of look at the first 10 applicants and I choose the best one in there. When I've done that, you know, sometimes you get lucky and it works like, like in love. But oftentimes it doesn't because I haven't done the research. I've hired in haste. So people do this every day in relationships because of that need, because of that desperation, because of loneliness. And I understand it. It doesn't make it wrong, but does it make it effective? So if you're wanting to find love, I want you to always remember not to be hasty with your heart because romantic relationships impact our life incredibly. The impact of our unhealthy relationship in our life is debilitating, can affect every aspect of our life. And most importantly, it can just feel horrible. It's kind of like living a life of hell in an unhealthy relationship. However, when you're in a healthy relationship, a truly connected relationship, even when there are challenges, it's okay because you know you've got each other's back. You know that you are there for each other. You see each other, support each other. You're invested in each other. And that makes people feel confident and safe in a relationship. So when we hire in haste and we choose someone who's not right for us, sometimes we think, well, at least I've got someone there for me. At least that person can do my emails for me or do the job on, on YouTube here that I need some help with, um, with some research or whatever it may be, whatever. I need help with, if that person really isn't suited to the job, it's going to cost me more down the track. Money, my time and energy, my own stress levels. When someone isn't working in a work sense, all the cogs, all the wheels start falling off. Yeah. Things aren't flowing. Yeah. The cogs aren't aligned. 
And so why is it that we don't apply sometimes the things that we would apply in our work life, in our business life? You know, people have contracts in businesses often. They have lined everything out. Everything is very clear about what they will and won't do, what that person is and isn't capable of. And yet in relationships, oftentimes people very blindly invest time and energy in someone that is potentially a mismatch. It's not about making the other person wrong. Sometimes we're just mismatches. We're not aligned. We're not on the same page. It doesn't make that person wrong. It doesn't make necessarily you wrong for choosing them. It just means that we need to learn from our mistakes. We need to learn from our haste and we need to be patient. And I have another video that's going to really help you and expand on the art of waiting um, and how to actually wait in a way that stops us from making hasty uh, commitments when it comes to our love life. And I'm going to put the link to that right below that you can check out after this video. So why is it that we end up in unhealthy relationships? Well, sometimes it's almost like people choose us. If we're out in the dating world and we're looking for love, if there's no one else around, we'll often think, well, this is all that's out there. This is what we'll do. I'm never going to find anybody else. I'm so tired of watching Netflix on my own. I'm so tired of walking my dog on my own. I'm so tired of being home alone on the couch, whatever it is. I'm so tired of turning up to family events and or weddings whatever it is, on my own. And so we become desperate and disempowered. I know how this feels. I know what it's like to want to deeply be loved, to experience love, to share your love with somebody. I know what it's like to want partnership. And yet, if it's not a match, it's not a match. And so what's the rush all about? If you have beliefs that, oh, I'm going to die old and alone. If you believe that you're only deserving of something average, all of these things, I get it, a part of your psyche that you need to have a look at, but they're not the reasons to stay in a relationship. I don't think every relationship is the same. Every human has different needs and wants when it comes to relationship. Not everyone wants someone who's funny. Not everyone wants someone who is financially secure. You know, it's not a massive priority for them. Not everyone wants someone who is tall or fit. Everyone has different preferences, except compatibility is compatibility. Flow is flow. And when the compatibility isn't there, it can feel dreadful, can feel more lonely. And one of the biggest challenges in life is if you actually do want to find a true match for yourself, then it's very important to be able to palate or process or digest times of being single, times of being alone, because if you're actually wanting to find true love, if you really do want to find that man that really does create that sparkle, that really does support you, that can see you, be there for you, as you can be for him, you're in a partnership that, with someone that really does add levity and joy and fun and play to your life. And when you do have challenges, you work through them together because you're both committed and it doesn't mean that you can work everything out, but most things are resolvable and the things that aren't you agree to disagree on, like all that stuff, you can do it well together then you can't hire in haste. You have to be okay with being single. You have to be confident standing in those single shoes while you wait for that perfect guy. In fact, one of the biggest challenges women have is not knowing how to date in a way that actually allows them not to hire in haste, that allows them to hire from a place of compatibility, on skill, on interest. Okay, so rule number one, never hire in haste. Rule number two, remember rule number one. This is going to set you up for life. It sets me up in my business. When I hire in haste, as I said, it doesn't go so well. I've had to learn to take it slow, to have the right conversations. And it's the same in my own love life. You've got to have the right conversations. You've got to take your time getting to know someone. The conversations can start with online dating before you even meet them. Just feel people out properly. You know, don't go just off the, f the photo or a few little things. Ask a few questions. When you meet, ask some more, not like an interrogation, open, warm, flowing conversation. But even if you're getting along, but you still pick up on some red flags or even, 
you know, amber flags, if you want to call it, or pink flags. So stay open to it, but also take your time. You need more data. Data doesn't sound sexy, but data allows you to work out if someone is right for you. Just because you feel tingles of desire and you have a laugh, it doesn't mean that that person is actually aligned with you. It's not as simple as that. Just because I have a good conversation with a potential freelancer or consultant, it doesn't mean that the person can do the job. Or maybe they can do the job, but we're not aligned in our personalities as well. Like all relationships flow and work on a whole lot of levels. Look at your closest friendships, the ones that work really well and the ones that don't. What are the qualities of those people? Write them down. Even family members, which family members do I flow with and which ones don't? Start getting really clear about the attributes and traits of people that you flow with and then look for that in a partner. Finding love doesn't have to be as complicated and to help you with that, I have a free gift called five easy ways to get a man to commit and stay committed. But it's not really about getting a man to commit to you. It's about understanding things that need to be in place, five different aspects of dating and relationships that need to be in place for both sides for an actual commitment to take place in a compatible sense. So please do check out that gift. It's a game changer and it will really open your eyes up to a whole lot of things that I've mentioned here, but also some extra tips that are going to help you move closer to finding love. So that link to five easy ways is right below in the description. So that's it for today. Please subscribe, click that bell button to get notified of my next hot topic, please share this with a friend. Also, please tag me at Instagram at Nadine Peart and also you can find me on other social media channels, of course. The links are right below and please comment. I want to hear about your situation with this and hiring in haste and dating in haste and all of that because I want to find out about who you are and what your needs are so I can support you in the best way possible. Also, if there's a topic you'd like me to do a video on, please also share that in the comments. It's an honor to have you here with me. I value you and I look forward to seeing you again at my next video.